Hey guys, welcome to Medwitch Made Simple. In this first part video on breast cancer, we will cover these topics. In the next video, we will do these. But this video gives the fundamental idea you must have for the next video, so make sure to watch it till the end. You can learn photography, graphics, music, creativity, art and much more on Skillshare. Use the link in description and get 1 month free trial and 30% discount if you decide to buy later after the free trial ends. Learn a new skill and upgrade yourself with Skillshare. Make sure to check out my brand new t-shirts on Etsy. The link is in description. Use the promo code the famous lion for 10% discount. Hurry up and you're gonna love it. First, let's talk about the surgical anatomy of breast. Vertically, it extends from the second to sixth rib and horizontally from the sternum to anterior axillary line. Breast is divided into four quadrants as you see here. Breast cancer is more common in the upper outer quadrant. The upper outer quadrant extends into the axilla through a foramen called foramen of Langer and this extension is called axillary tail of Spence. Sometimes this normal breast tissue is confused as a breast lump. Breast has three parts, skin, parenchyma and stroma. The skin covering the breast has two special features called nipple and areola. Nipple is the central projection and areola is the hyperpigmented area around nipple. The parenchyma of the breast is made of ducts and lobules. Here you can see the lobes of the breast. There are about 15 to 20 lobes in each breast. In each lobe there is a cluster of alveoli which produces milk and the milk is drained by a lactiferous duct. As you can see here, this is the lactiferous duct which drains milk from the alveoli and near the end the lactiferous ducts form a dilatation called as lactiferous sinus. If there is tumor in the breast which involves the lactiferous ducts, there will be retraction of nipple. If the nipple is circumferentially retracted, it is suggestive of malignancy. However, if it is a slit-like retraction, it is most likely benign. The stroma is divided into interlobular stroma and intralobular stroma. The stroma is composed of fibrous and fatty tissue and the balance between the fibrous and fatty tissue helps us decide between ultrasound versus mammogram for investigating a breast lump in women of various ages. Women less than 45 years usually have more dense breast, which means they have more fibrous tissue so mammogram is not sensitive enough to detect a breast lump in them, so we use ultrasound in them. Whereas in elderly women, the breast becomes less dense which means the fibrous tissue is being replaced by more of fatty tissue in these patients mammogram will be able to find out if there are any lumps. Now deep to the breast we have pectoral fascia which is a deep fascia covering pectoral major muscle. Deep to it we have retromammary space which is composed of loose areolar tissue. We can move the breast around because of this layer. Below that we have muscles like pectoralis major, extra oblique and serratus anterior. From the pectoral fascia there are extensions called as suspensory ligaments of Cooper which are attached underneath the skin of breast. If cancerous growths invade the corpus ligament, it pulls the skin of the breast under causing an indentation which can be called as dimpling, retraction or puckering. Breast has extensive lymphatic drainage, so it's easy for the cancer to spread. The five main groups of axillary lymph nodes are anterior, posterior, central, apical and lateral group of axillary lymph nodes. Lymphatics of breast can also drain into internal mammary nodes and supraclavicular nodes. Etiology of breast cancer Breast cancer is the most common cancer in the world, in India and also very common in US. It is more common in elderly women and the risk is increased in those with risk factors like obesity, alcohol consumption, etc. Radiation exposure to chest can also increase the risk. Breast density is also considered as a risk factor. The more dense the breast, the higher the risk. Genetics also play a major role. Family history of breast cancer is known to increase the risk. Also, mutations in genes like BRCA1 and BRCA2, which are tumor suppressor genes, also can increase the risk. Breastfeeding is protective against breast cancer. That's why it is very important also for the mother. However, nulliparous women, meaning those who hasn't given birth to a child, those with early menarche, means those who had their menses begin at a very early age, and those with late menopause are at slightly higher risk of developing breast cancer because of the continued and prolonged exposure of estrogen on breast. Pathology of breast cancer Breast cancer is broadly divided into ductal carcinoma and lobular carcinoma. Ductal carcinoma arises from the ducts of breast and lobular carcinoma from the lobules. These are carcinomas means they arise from the epithelium. The cancers which arise from stroma of breast are called as sarcomas like phylloidous tumor. We will see that in the upcoming videos. These are further divided into carcinoma in situ and invasive carcinoma. How do you do that? Carcinoma in situ is the one where there is intact basement membrane. The cancer is limited to the concerned ducts or lobules and haven't started to spread beyond in this case. They are highly pre-malignant, means they can become cancer anytime. 
but recently lobular carcinoma in situ is being considered as not premalignant. It occurs due to e catherine mutation. When the basement membrane is breached, it means the tumor is no longer your child. It is going to explore the world with no limits. Just kidding. But that's kind of what happens in invasive ductal carcinoma and invasive lobular carcinoma. The invasive carcinoma has few types. The most common type is called as not otherwise specified type, which is also known as classical invasive carcinoma. The special histological types are tubular, mucinous, medullary, and papillary carcinoma. These are rare and not common like the not otherwise specified type. Now there is a type of cancer called inflammatory carcinoma which is considered as stage T4D which means it is advanced type. The breast appears like orange skin in this condition so it is called as pudy or orange appearance. It is a misnomer because there is no inflammation actually. It just appears like inflamed orange skin and it occurs because of infiltration of the subdermal lymphatics by the cancer cells. Now molecular classification of breast cancer is done based on hormone receptor status. There are special stains to look for these hormone receptors such as ER means estrogen receptor, PR means progesterone receptors and HER2 new receptors in the cancer cells. Based on that we can classify breast cancer as luminal A type which is ER positive, PR positive but HER2 new negative. This type the luminal A type has the best prognosis. Then the next type is luminal B which is kind of similar it also has ER PR positivity but here HER2 new can be positive or negative but here the major difference is that there is high KI67 levels which is a marker of proliferation. Highly proliferative tumors have high KI67 levels. The third type is called as HER2 new enriched type where the ER and PR are negative whereas only HER2 new is positive. Basal type is also known as triple negative breast cancer where ER, PR, HER2 new all are negative. This has the worst prognosis. So luminal A type has the best prognosis whereas the basal or the triple negative type has the worst prognosis. Now clinical features. Patients usually present with a swelling which they could feel themselves at times or detected upon routine examination or mammogram. Some patients may present with bloody nipple discharge. However, there can be other causes for bloody nipple discharge too like a papilloma in the duct. It is commonly painless. However, some patients may experience pain. Nipple retraction can also occur. As I explained already, circumferential retraction is more suggestive of malignancy. There can be some complications like ulceration means the tumor can develop into ulcer because of the insufficient blood supply and superimposed infection. There can be fungation means fungating growth on the breast can occur. It can spread to lymph nodes and can present as axillary swelling or sometimes in apparent swelling found out on examination. There's a cool technique called sentinel lymph node biopsy. I'll talk about that in the next video. Breast cancer can spread to other organs like bones, especially the vertebrae, liver, lungs, brain and ovaries. Metastatic cancer of ovary is called Krukenberg tumor. Cancer from breast can spread to the vertebrae by the bad plexus of veins, which is valveless, means there are no valves in these plexus of veins, so the cancer cells can just drop from the breast to the vertebrae. So in this video we saw all these. In the next video we will see all these, so make sure to subscribe. It will be really kind of you to hit the like button if you found it helpful. You can download the lecture slides, the link is in the description. You can learn photography, graphics, music, creativity, art and much more on Skillshare. Use the link in the description and get 1 month free trial and 30% discount if you decide to buy later after the free trial ends. Learn a new skill and upgrade yourself to Skillshare. Make sure to check out my brand new t-shirts on Etsy, the link is in the description. Use the promo code the famous lion for 10% discount, hurry up. Click here to watch the next video, you can watch the whole surgery playlist here, buy my t-shirts here. And here on Medwits Made Simple, you can learn longer concepts in med school in simplified ways to make it less boring and save your time. So subscribe right now. I'll see you in the next video. Adios y muchas gracias. Thank you very much.